Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Ferris Sports Update. I'm your host Rob Bentley and thanks for tuning in. Got a busy show, we'll recap a memorable trip to the Frozen Four for the Ferris State hockey team and we'll talk track and field. First up, head coach Bob Daniels and coach, welcome back to the show. Rob, thanks for having me again. Bulldogs uh, in the Frozen Four this past week, taking on Union on Thursday and then you advance to the championship game on Saturday against Boston College and just talk about that experience as a whole being able to play in the Frozen Four. Wow, it, way way bigger than I thought it would be and, and I thought it would be you know I've been to a number of them and I actually have worked a few uh, where uh, they have a, a coach host if you will and they assign to different teams and I remember working and being in St. Paul years ago and but I, I it was, you know it was just mind-boggling from the moment we touched down it had a reggae band there to meet the plane that was unusual I can't say I've ever seen anything like that for hockey before but they had a, a local reggae band there and uh, just all the different things that went on behind the scenes the games themselves were unbelievable and what a fun thing to participate in I was so happy our student athletes our fans and everyone got a chance to to enjoy that but it was a lot of the behind the scenes things that were you know really I thought first class well done and an experience for our student athletes uh, that they'll always cherish. You start off the, in the national semifinals against a very good Union College team making their first trip to the Frozen Four. And uh, Talk about heading into that matchup and what you expected uh, between Ferris State and Union. Well, we thought it was going to be a close game. Um, watching them on video the past two weeks, we had two weeks to prepare for that game, and we watched a lot of video on that team. And Dave Sensor, our video coach, did an outstanding job of putting a, a game plan together and, and a video plan. And um, But we expected it to be a one-goal game. We knew it was going to be close. We figured it would be low scoring and we thought as we were preparing for them we were really preparing for ourselves in a way because their game plan was so same so similar to ours and their team makeup was very similar to ours and and so you know what it, the game unfolded pretty much how we we anticipated obviously we didn't know you know you don't anticipate you, you think you're going to win but um it in terms of a two to one three to one game with an empty netter just what we thought as we go to the video highlights uh heading into the Frozen Four with so many media obligations and so much going on the last couple of weeks. Uh, how did your kids respond to all of that uh, to get ready to play against Union? Really well and, and you know I, I've got to say we're probably fortunate that we played Union the first night. Two teams, very you know th their first trip there so it was good. You could see it in the play in the first period. Both teams looked really nervous. Neither team really handled the puck all that well. It was pretty forgetful first period but then the game really picked, on, picked up momentum and where I thought we finally started playing real hockey and, and both teams did was when they scored. Up to that point it was 0-0 halfway through the second and again I thought both teams were just still feeling each other out just kind of finding their way. The minute they scored that goal it was like okay game on and then we started playing better, um, came back, scored the equalizer, took the uh, lead in the third period um, with a, by a great goal by Kyle Bonus and uh, you know from that point uh, it was really a, I thought a quality hockey game but up until they scored it was really kind of a snoozer. Talk about the, the environment, being able to play at the Tampa Bay Times Forum. Great crowd on hand, both games, and uh, just talk about that environment with the, with the Bulldog fans on hand as well. Oh, first of all, our fans were unbelievable. They both, all four teams that came down there had great followings. I think probably 20,000 people each night in the rink, and I would say probably 16,000 were from out of the state of Florida. They were fans. It was, it was interesting, too. Yeah, I know I'm digressing a bit here, but all the fans with the different jerseys on, we saw people wearing Wisconsin, Duluth, Lake Superior, Michigan State, Michigan jerseys, Notre Dame, you know, just jerseys of all sorts down there. And I just think it's kind of a celebration of college hockey. Um, but we were so proud, our fans were second to none down there. And the environment was really great. Uh, it, it's awesome in our rink all the time, but you know, here with the crowds, the size of the building, it was, it was terrific. You saw Union's first goal, and then the Bulldogs, as you mentioned, able to respond quickly with a with a big goal there by Aaron Schmidt. That was a big goal by Aaron Schmidt. It was it was set up by Kyle Bonus going stronger than that. One of the things we thought we had to do against them was find our way to the front of the goal because they're so big and so strong. You see the second goal here by Kyle Bonus. Same thing right in front of the net. We knew there'd be very few scoring chances, so we had to limit the scoring chances we gave Union as well. Finally, you get the empty netter uh, coming up from Aaron Schmidt, and a uh, big win. Uh, something you uh, did you ever expect uh, national semifinals to be able to pull out a win like that? No, I mean in my dreams, no. I I've always thought about it'd be great to get there, it'd be great for our program to get to the Frozen Four, great for the university. And um, once you're there, though, 
it, the interesting thing is there's so many things surrounding that. You really lose track of the players. The players lose track of the coaches. We, we're all going in different directions. We have different obligations. Um, but once the game started, it was all familiar territory to us. But getting up to the game, everything was really unusual. Not only do you win the game uh, in the Frozen Four, you advance to the national championship game. First time any uh, Ferris State team has played in a national championship game and, and really a historic moment both for the university and the program. It sure was. And, and um, uh, again, it, it kind of hurt us to have an off day in between. I, I think it gave us a chance to, oh, you know, to, uh, to think a lot. I mean, it was hard to sleep the night before that championship game. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I probably didn't get any sleep at all that night. And uh, I always thought it'd be, it'd be a fine, but, it, you know, the nerves start to get to you. But again, once we got back to the rink, once the puck was dropped and the game was being played, I thought we were, we, you know, we sold it very well. They scored early goal in this game, as you watch the highlights here. Here it is. And again, I think that helped us. I, I know it sounds funny, but once they scored, it was like, okay. And we came right back and got the tire. And anyone that had watched Boston College, they had won 18 straight games going into this by large margins usually. And we fought, we got this game into our style of game. I thought in a contest of wills, we slowly made this a defensive, in the trenches type of game. And um, you know, we got our goal all along was to get inside of five minutes and be within a goal. One way that we, whether we had a goal lead or not, we wanted a one goal game late. And we got that. And we figured, okay, game on. Anybody at this chance could have won it, but here you see an unbelievable goal by Goudreau, um, one of the best goals, and if you're going to get beat, a, a goal like that to beat you, okay, we can live with that. As you look back at the, the trip to the Frozen Four, the national championship game, uh, it's been a tremendous season all the, all the way around with the CCHA title, the Midwest Regional Championship. What's been kind of the, the big highlight for you uh, in terms of this past season? Wow, there's been so many of them. Um, I, I would say Probably, you know, making it to the championship game has got to be the big highlight. And I don't want to come off as, you know, arrogant at all, but we had won a league title before, and, and that it was obviously, it'll always be remarkable, and I'll always remember that. But I think getting to a championship game and, and, and getting to experience that with really such a fine group of young men, and I know people always talk about that too, but truthfully, this was really an exceptional group of kids, a very mature group, and uh, to enjoy that ride with such a good group of people. And then also to share that those moments with the fans and our students, that the, the students that made it down there, they bust down 24 hours. And they're just getting back right now, actually. And we've been home almost for a day now. So I'm so appreciative of, of what our fans have meant to the program as well. Some great individual honors uh, kind of bestowed on the Bulldogs uh, down at the Frozen Four. Uh, first of all, congratulations to you as the National Coach of the Year. Uh, some other great honors, Taylor Nilsson, a first-team All-American, Chad Billins, a second-team All-American, and, and Tommy Hill, a captain, uh, honored as the Elite 89 winner for the highest grade point average. And I'd like to talk about the Elite 89 one. Of uh, Obviously, very proud of uh, Chad and Taylor and their accomplishments, but I think that those are ones that are out there. Everyone knows about the Elite 89. Uh, may have not got as much recognition, but is equally as important. And that's uh, bestowed upon the student athlete uh, of the four teams all, uh, uh, that are represented there who has the highest grade point average. And for Tommy Hill to win that, I mean, it puts him in, in, in uh, company with Chad, uh, Chad Billings, who was the Scholar Athlete of the Year in the CCHA. And we're so proud that we were able to be successful off the ice. And I think, again, it typifies the kind of kids that we had in the team this year. As you look back now, what does uh, this uh, accomplishment, this great season mean for the Bulldogs as you move forward, uh, pointing towards next year already? Well, I hope that we can get, garner the experience. And, and I know I can speak for myself on this. Being there once, you want to get back again. Honest to God, I, it was such a fun time and such a great experience. I think our fans probably feel that way. The players that are returning feel that way. Now, whether we can or can't, that's a mouthful. But I can say this, the one thing you, get, you come away from when you, you get to experience is, boy, that was fun. Let's do it again. Well, Coach, uh, congratulations again on truly a historic season for the Bulldog Hockey Program and the university. And uh, thanks for being with us here all season long. Rob, thank you. We'll be back with more Ferris Sports Update right after this.